Well, um, after I found out that, that Mike quit, which was because my phone was inundated with text messages, emails, the whole bit. I was like, all right, so did a tidal wave hit Boston today? <laughs> Look, what happened? Um, I immediately knew it was something I wanted to do badly. And it was something that I prepared for with many plans. You know, plan A, B, and C. What if this? What if they ask me that? What if they need this? What if... Yeah, I know I show up and my left foot hurts. What if I don't have the right headphones? What if, you know, I don't get any warm-up time? I kind of accounted for all those things because my heart was really in it. Well, I didn't approach this any, any different than I approach any audition. I've had approximately 44 or 45 auditions in my life. And this, I want this to come out right. Now, I've won every single one of them. But it's not a, a matter of, I never think I'm even a better player than the next guy. I am so, I have the fear of God in me. I really do. I've been given some gifts. I, I don't want to fall short of those. So I work really hard. And I always think somebody else is working a lot harder than me. Because I know as a teacher, talent gets you to a point. But then you have to work. So, you know, and, and my old teacher, my drum teacher used to say it. He's like, you know, I don't care who you are, who you think you are, whatever. The guy that plays each song 300 times, he gets the job. So it was very humbling uh, being brought up like with, with that in me from age, you know, 10 to 18. So I approached it the same way I have done everything. Just everybody else has a little bit more than me. And, and these guys are going to work harder than me. So I just have to get up at 530 in the morning and do everything I can do. It wasn't difficult. I had been, now this has to come out right. I had been wanting to leave for a few years anyway. But it was more like I'd been want, I wanted to go to something. I wanted to go to a band. You see, because I love teaching. And I learn a lot from the students. When I teach, I become a better player. And it helps me become a better person too because I have to be unselfish. I have to put another person first every day and to do that eight nine ten times in a row a day it begins to form a habit where you learn to listen to others and put them first so I love that it's just that I, I wanted to leave the, the, the college environment where I had to be there so much and I couldn't perform if I could have performed a lot more and maybe gotten away with being away four weeks because I make up I made up all my classes I never missed classes, and I always made them up late night, weekends, and I always gave students extra classes, too. And they can, I have, you know, more than a couple hundred emails in case I ever had to prove it. But, um, you know, I wanted to do it on my own terms, and you just can't do that in that environment. So uh, I really needed to play. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't tough for me to leave that, but it was very emotional for me to leave my colleagues, who I love to death, and the students, and just that feeling. It was just such a great place. I didn't even know he wanted to go back. We don't talk about any of that. <clears throat> None of that is my business. None, and like all kinds of stuff that comes out online, it's like it really is not my business. I don't ask and we don't talk about it. So I find out online. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. But um, uh, yeah, we're just moving forward. And I, I need to say that perhaps the reason John has responded to, the, to these kinds of questions the way he has is because, look, I, I think when we all want to know the unknown or learn something new, the truth is not an easy thing to find. The best decision is not easy for us. Otherwise, none of us would make mistakes, you know. But there's something that happened in that room when I auditioned that day where the truth, as far as passion, heart, spirit, things that are out of our control, things that are just in there. I don't even choose them sometimes. 
the truth of all that, where everybody was, and how we all are as people, what we want in life, we knew that day that we were on the same page musically and and with everything pretty much. I mean, we would order the same food all the time. And it gets, you know, I could get funny saying how much, you know, symmetry or synergy or synchronicity, whatever word you want to use, it just it just works and it's natural. And so, yeah, none of that really crossed my mind. It wasn't anything I was ever worried about because I knew that the bond was strong. You know, and, and now I've known Mike for a long time. He's amazing, man. You know, he's made more things happen. And I've told him this in private for many, many years. I've said it in public. I'm saying it right now. I've been consistent from point A till right now. That, that guy, if, when something's in his heart, he can make it happen. And I have no worries that uh, he won't make the most amazing thing happen. So I had feel-good vibes the whole way for many reasons, and that's one of them. All the music was written before I joined. Yeah. Well, um, I felt so relieved that they wrote without me, and it, and it was just them. And I've made comments before, just to be clear, like, okay, they wrote with no drummer. And it's not a way to avoid saying, well, they didn't write with Mike, they didn't write with me. It's just, that's just a description. I, when I say that, it's just a description of it, because they're composers on the instruments, and the music can come out differently. You know, I write differently on instruments without, without me playing on the drum. So it has nothing to do, it might not be in there, it has nothing to do with anything. It's just like they wrote with no drummer. And I was relieved that they did that for two reasons. Number one, they were at peace with composing on those particular instruments, just putting parts together that they felt worked quarterly and so forth. And also, it helped give me a map so I wouldn't have to think so much. So I wouldn't have to try to be anybody I'm not. You know, it's just like, all right, this is how it is. I'm going to go play the music the way I would orchestrate if I was in my room by myself, which is what I did in a room at my house by myself having some fun so I could come and present John these ideas and then he could just go through them all and figure out what worked. Gee, I'm a fan of all of it. It's because all of it is interesting. It's, it's just, there's nothing boring about this music and this band. So for me, um, it's a pleasure to play the pre-existing parts. They're absolutely tremendous, fun. So I, there's nothing that, that, I don't know, I don't have a favorite or not. Because I'm always digging deeper into the, catalog into little nooks and crannies and finding all these gems and moments. So it's great. Yes, I did. I was I started out as an engineering aide because I didn't have a degree. So I started working at Raytheon and working on the documentation and then I kind of once I learned how to use the computer again <laughs> <laughs> you know, I worked my way in, and I ended up at the end of my tenure being awarded a full-time staff position. So um, that meant that I could be creative with the programming. And the very day I got the stack of programs, I stared at them in my office, and I stared at them, and all I thought was, it's time for me to now go. And I started my own teaching business I started playing. But it was, you know, in the music business is difficult. I, th I think the way to do it is be able to pay your bills and still enjoy your music. I mean, if, if trying to combine the two, making a living playing music, is going to give you so much stress that you end your life early because of it, then it's not worth it. Well, I'm not, I mean, not personally like a jump off a building, but I, but I meant that stress kills people. Stress kills people. That's just not worth it. That's not fun. So I had a job I could pay my bills, I got my teaching business going, I got in a band, and then it was time to just make a transition. Yeah. That was the worst 
bit of nervous tension, making all kinds of mistakes and just breaking everything that I ever had happen. Now, I'm exaggerating a bit. It wasn't that bad because he wouldn't have had me back the following days to record. But I had a, my very first drum clinic the same day I had the recording session with Steve Perry. And I was out of my mind. I, I, I honestly, I couldn't even keep my place counting like three or four bars. Uh, my head was spinning. I was sitting there listening to the greatest rock voice I had ever heard in my life in my headphones and there he is I'm like oh my gosh Steve Perry's there and his oh his voice is so good and there I am trying to oh my gosh what bar am I in I, I couldn't manage it and then I had to go for a drum clinic I feel like being in dream theater now is a sense of completion the example I can give you is me a few years prior uh, lo looking at my drum set in my room and thinking, who the heck can I be happy with? Where can I be myself? How can I be happy? Who's going to let me play drums and not tell me I, I can't set up a cowbell? I mean, why can't I be like a nine-year-old kid when I want to be? And just hit the drums, you know? And that's what I have in this band, and it's a sense of purpose for me. I, I'm so thrilled. I, I'm grateful every night I go to bed.